Besides the causes we've described, overloading and flooding can also occur when vapor and liquid flows become restricted by scale buildup or damage to bubble caps or packing. But regardless of the cause, operators must be able to identify the problem so that it can be eliminated. A number of indicators can be used to identify overloading or flooding, including column pressures and temperatures. The buildup of liquid can cause the pressure below the flooding point to rise. So the differential pressure across the column will increase. Also, since heat from the reboiler is basically blocked from rising, the temperature at the bottom of the column may increase as well. As a result, there may be a greater differential temperature across the column. Now, if puking develops, the surge of liquid and vapor up and down the column can cause fluctuations in the pressures and temperatures, as well as in the level of liquid in the bottom of the column. Also, liquid that's forced out of the top of the column can cause a sudden rise in the level in the receiver. Now, some of the more common methods used to eliminate a flooding problem involve temporarily decreasing the feed rate, the reflux rate, or both to reduce the amount of liquid in the column, and decreasing the bottom temperature to reduce the flow rate of vapor up the column. In extreme cases, it may even be necessary to shut down the column so that the problem can be corrected. If the feed rate to a distillation column is too high, overloading and flooding can occur. But the performance of a distillation system can also suffer if the feed rate is too low. For example, if the feed rate to the column in this system decreases, the level of condensed overhead vapor in the receiver and the level of liquid in the bottom of the column will start to drop. As a result, less liquid will be available for reflux and for circulating through the reboiler. If the levels continue to fall, control devices will reduce the takeoff of overhead product and bottoms product. To correct a low feed rate problem, the cause of the problem has to be identified. If a feed line blockage is detected, it must be cleaned out so that the feed rate can be restored to normal. If an instrument reading seems unusual, it should be reported. In the meantime, the feed rate may have to be controlled manually. In addition to feed rate problems, feed temperature problems can also affect some distillation systems. For example, the temperature of the feed entering this column should be close to the temperature at the feed tray. If the temperature of the feed is much higher or lower than the temperature at the feed tray, product separation will be disturbed. Problems can also occur if the feed mixture is contaminated with water or other foreign material. Depending on the temperatures in the column, water could vaporize and contaminate the overhead product, or settle to the bottom of the column and contaminate the bottom's product. Many of the problems that affect a distillation system can occur during startup. For that reason, operators should be on the lookout for problems such as improper feed rates and temperatures, instrument failures, and residue buildup in feed and product lines. In vacuum distillation systems, operators should also watch for leaks. A vacuum leak will cause changes in the temperatures and pressures in the column, which can reduce the efficiency of the system or stop the distillation process altogether. In this topic, we looked at how feed flow is controlled, and we examined some problems related to the feed system.